Hey guys, Anarchy here today. Um, this is probably my hundredth take of this video. I'm trying to make it information uh, as information dense as possible for you guys and as short uh, and concise as possible. So uh, thanks for the support on the last video. Let's get straight into it. It's Anarchy here. Um, today's topic is crosshair placement. This is going to involve a lot of other things such as angles, off angles, peaking, and jiggle peaking, as well as some strategy behind how to deal with certain angles, how to deal with peaking. Right? So First of all, before we talk about crosshair placement, let's talk about angles. What are angles? Angles are areas where we are very likely to encounter another counter-terrorist, or an enemy counter-terrorist, or an enemy terrorist, through one specific line of sight. This is one common example. Whether the terrorist is uh, at the lower part, or at the higher part. Let me give myself an op real quick. Whether they're at the lower part or the higher part, often you'll see oppers peek around here because this is one location they're very likely to encounter an enemy opper. Right. The reason why this happens is because, well, it's Counter-Strike, there are certain areas where we can see each other that are very sm very tight. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of different reasons. I'm not going to go into why, but I will go into what. Some of the other common angles on Inferno are here. As an opera, I'm often playing here. I don't know why I didn't just keep the op. As an op uh, on CT side, I'm often playing here. And to deal with it on T side, I'm going to do what's called pre-aiming. Right. So with my knowledge of Counter-Strike, having played more than one game, um, and having watched some pro demos, stuff like that. Not talking about me, I'm talking about an example player. You know, you can say to yourself, my knowledge of Counter-Strike, well, it's very likely that there's a player here. So how do I deal with him? Well, we're going to have to use what's called pre-aiming. Pre-aiming is looking at an angle through a wall, such to um, make sure that we peek out into them. So what is peeking? I already used that terminology. Um, peeking is simply looking into a location. It doesn't necessarily involve an angle, but it often does. For example, if I'm going around this corner, uh, and looking towards this area, that is peaking. Right? I'm exposing myself, but also trying to get the information in the frag on my opponent. So um, here, we're pre-aiming through the wall to try to get that kill on that player. Right? How many times have we seen just Kenny S peaking JW or whatever? Right? Or device, I think it was device. <laughs> and then, you know, device being JW, or uh, Kenny S, whatever, I'm, I'm getting confused. But this is one common angle. You can pre-aim it to deal with it. Right? So let's also talk about other kinds of peaking. If you have a rifle, or maybe it's a pistol round or something like that, you you know you don't have a weapon fit to deal with him, perhaps you'll do what's called jiggle peeking. So jiggle peeking is where you go past a corner, um, and you just sort of go into it, maybe take one shot, and then you immediately back up, right? So it's often done with a knife on certain angles. You'll see it done in a lot of different locations, especially on CT side, right? If I'm the you know an eco player, or I have a rifle playing arch side here, I'm very scared of the opera coming in to kill me. So I'll jiggle peek this angle such that if a player runs around the corner and pre-fires, he's very likely not to kill me because I'm running away. Right? He's, it's very unlikely that he'll get the timing of me running into it. Right? Even if I peek it super tight like this, um, he's very unlikely to kill me. So there's a couple different reasons why this is done, but that's one main way. Now strategically, how to deal with um, the angles and peeking and whatnot is to smoke things out. Quickly, I'll show you the smoke. Get into here. Aim at this. And that's going to smoke off this side of mid. The reason behind it is because strategically, we no longer have to worry nearly as much about peeking into this area or dealing with this angle, this tight angle. It no longer exists because of the smoke. Now, players can still shoot through smokes, so there is a risk behind using the grenades, but it is generally the most effective thing. That's why we'll see smoke executes on Inferno, we'll see smoke executes on Mirage, Cash, every map pretty much. Um, because smokes deal with angles. The less angles you have to deal with, the better. Right, pushing into Inferno here with no grenades, it's pretty much hell. You're dealing with pit, and then you're dealing with all of this. And as you cross into the site, you're exposing yourself to four different things at once. Maybe a guy on balcony, pit, and graveyard, and site, and this, and maybe boosted up there, <laughs> or in the corner. Right? There's so much shit, just so much bullshit to deal with. You, you use the smokes and the flashes, right? So one quick way to get yourself an advantage uh, on an angle is to flash the angle. Right? Idea behind that is you blind the player. You could possibly remove the opera playing this angle by blinding him. He'll have to back up because if he stays there, you can peek into him and he can't be sure when you are. Right? So you can remove players from uh, locations like that. Now that we've talked about um, peeking and angles, let's talk about off angles. So what is an off angle? A famous example of an off angle is Happy's location right here when he got that famous and infamous uh, Deagle Ace onto TSM. Right? So the idea behind playing right here is you catch your opponent off guard. This is the main angle that they're going to check. Well, also um, uh, this one as well, because those locations are often going to be where you encounter the, the enemy CTs, right? So you come around this corner, and once you peek CT, you say, oh, you know, this area is clear, nobody plays there, right? Well, Happy does, and he gets five kills on TSM when he does. So, uh, you know, be scared. Be scared, guys. Uh, the next angle in your mind is you peek CT, and then you peek the spools here, right? 
Um, so what this is called, this specific thing where I'm peaking from one location to another, it's called a peak progression. That's my name for it. You know, I'm sure people have a bunch of different names. Maybe it's just peaking in succession, right? Whatever. Um, but the idea behind it is that before you enter a bomb site or as you're entering a bomb site on the terrorist side, there's a numerous amount of locations you need to check. So you check them one by one. First we check here, then we check CT, then we check spools, then we check lowest spools, then close, then dark, then the back of fountain, then new box, possibly pre-firing them, and then we deal with get right. I mean, as we're crossing this point, yes, we sort of do have to deal with spools as well, so we're running with our back turned. Not always the best decision. And then we have to clear into new box and dark at once, which is sort of difficult. Right? So as we talked about before, using grenades is a great way to deal with them. Um, that was a smoke for CT, and now I'll show you a smoke for spools. Get into here, line yourself up with this, aim up to here, and just slightly to the left. And that's going to smoke off the spools. Um, well, that was actually a pretty shitty smoke. <laughs> uh, let's just ignore that. I think you go a little bit more to the left. Maybe line up with this. Not 100% on that smoke. This isn't a smoke video, so... Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> Forgive me for that one. But uh, we see the smokes here. Deal with that. And also flashbangs deal with that. I do know a good flash for this location. You just aim here and you sort of walk backwards. And that's going to bounce over top. Won't blind your teammates, but it will blind anybody playing there. Just that little bit, right? I can run past. It won't flash me. Spools will get flashed. Uh, but that's enough of the technology and shit of how to deal with it. Uh, now that we know what an angle is, um, an off angle is, and in peak progression, uh, let's talk about crosshair placement itself. Right? The main topic, even though it's left for last. Why is that? Because all these other things are go into defining what's the right thing to do with your crosshair, right? So crosshair placement here is uh, in Counter-Strike, very often to encounter enemies at the angles, very often going to encounter people um, even at off angles sometimes, but the main thing you're going to need to worry about is aiming away from the walls and keeping your crosshair at headshot height. So this is important because headshot height is how you get the most frags, and aiming away from the walls is allowing you to look at the players. Now sometimes we do look into the angles by aiming through the walls, and that's okay, because there's not going to be an enemy right here. That's why I can look through this wall. Um, so yeah, cross replacement is actually a pretty simple concept, but doing it right on a lot of different maps is not as easy as you'd think. Uh, what with all the angles, especially on Inferno here, it's very hard to have perfect cross replacement when you're checking all these different things at once, especially if you're running past. Um, but anyways, uh, that's most of what I wanted to talk about in this video. Hope you guys liked it. Hope it was information dense enough for you guys. Thanks for the support on the last one and all the views and the subscribers. Appreciate it very much. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.